We began yesterday and God's servant unveiled this line of exhortation, kicking us off for the week. God does not reward efforts made. He rewards results obtained. God does not reward efforts made. Efforts made in kingdom stewardship, but he rewards results that are obtained. This is very crucial for us to understand this truth. Now, as powerful as scriptural revelations are, they only deliver on the choices of the individual. As powerful, as potent, as scriptural revelations, scriptural truths, light from the word, as powerful, as scriptural truths are, they only deliver on the choices of the individuals. So all promises of scriptures are only delivered on the choices of the saints. So your choice and my choice goes a long way in determining the results that we generate. Interestingly, God never forces anything on anyone. Never. This God will never force anything on anyone. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, hear what the Almighty God said. Behold, I stand at the door. This is God speaking. Almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-doing. I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. So I will stand and I will knock till the man opens. And the man has the choice to either open or refuse to open. God will never force anything on any man. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19 he says, Behold, I've called the heaven and the earth to witness or record this day against you that I have said before you, the way I said before every one of us, life and death, blessing and curses. He said, Therefore, you choose life. I won't choose for any man. You choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. God never forces anything on any man. So our obedience or disobedience to any commandment of scripture is absolutely a matter of choice. Our obedience or disobedience to any commandment of scriptures, remember what I say to one, I say to all. Every commandment of scripture is to every child of God. But your obedience and my obedience or your disobedience and my disobedience to any commandment of scripture is absolutely a matter of our choice. Matthew 21, from verse 28 to 31. Matthew 21, 28 to 31. We see a story here. A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first son and he said, Son, go walk today in my vineyard. Now, this story is very emphatic. Go walk in my vineyard. That's the same way God is speaking to every child of God. Every born again, every believer. Go walk in my vineyard. It's the same way speaking to us in operation by all means. Go walk in my vineyard. It kicked off yesterday. It was unveiled on Sunday. The same way this father was saying to his son, son, go walk in my vineyard. And he had a response. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterwards, he repented and he went. And there was a second son and he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go. I go. But he went not. So there are always two categories. The category that will go and the category that will not go. May you and I be counted among the category that will go. Say an amen like a true believer. But you discover from this story 
that the outcome of their engagement was a product of their choices. One first refused, but later changed his mind and he went and the other refused to go. Every commandment is at the absolute determining force of our choices. Now, the commandment of soul winning is the ultimate assignment from God to every believer. Every child of God has the mandate of soul winning. Mark 16 and verse 15. Go into the world. This was a commandment God was giving Mark 16. And he said to them, go ye, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. And that is the simple mandate of operation by all means. Go ye into our harvest field. Preach the good news. Go ye all across Lagos and Otter. Preach the good news. And draft men from the dungeon of destruction into the kingdom of light. So the commandment of soul winning is the ultimate assignment. You and I have been given a ministry of reconciliation. Partnering with God to reconcile the dying world to him. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. And all things of God, the Bible says. Who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given. So as long as you are born again, you have been given the ministry of reconciliation. So we are to go out, verse 19, reconciling the world unto God, not imputing their trespasses unto them. That's the mandate that God has given to every child of God. And that is why heaven rejoices over any soul that is saved. There's joy in heaven. There's celebration. There's tribulation. Why? Another soul has been rescued from the dungeon of destruction and has been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. There's joy in heaven. Luke 15 and verse 7. Luke 15 and verse 7. There's joy. There's joy. There's celebration. The Bible says... I say unto you that likewise, joy shall be in heaven. Over how many sinners? One. 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 So there's tribulation. Over one. 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 One sinner that is saved. One. Yesterday at the kickoff of operation, by all means, I was out on the outreach field ministering to people. And then we came across a young man, not too young, maybe middle age. Now, this man used to be in ministry, vibrant pastor. But for some reasons, he lost his place. And from about 2016 till 2023, no church, a fire-branded man of God. And God organized him to be seated on the street and organized our team to get there. And then by divine orchestration, we began ministering to him and then he was watching. And he said the Lord had been witnessing to him, but he has been fighting it. But he doesn't know why he came out here. And how the steps of God's children were sent there. We dedicated his life to Christ. And he's coming back to church. From 2016 or 2015 to 2023, a one-time fire-branded man of God. So when we go out, we are out on a rescue mission. God has given the mandate to every one of us as his children that there are people languishing there. Go and rescue them. And there's joy and celebration. I could imagine how heaven was dancing yesterday after all the souls that were saved. That is how heaven rejoices after every soul is saved via your hand. And listen to this. You can't bring joy to heaven and heaven will deposit joy in your own life. Get set. The best joy experience is coming for you in this prophetic season. Say an amen like a true believer. So every soul is of equal value before God. Every soul. The soul of the rich, the soul of the poor. The soul of the learned, the soul of the unlearned. Every soul is of equal value, equal worth before the Lord. Second Peter 3 and verse 9. The Bible says the Lord is not slacked 
as many cause slackness, but is loving, long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish. So the soul of the woman in the village is of equal importance like the soul of the multi billionaire. The soul of every man is equal before God. God places equal value. That's why salvation and the gospel message must be preached to everyone, no matter where they are, no matter who they are. But as far as soul winning is concerned, we are rewarded for results obtained and not for efforts made. Rewards. Rewards. Results obtained. Matthew 25 from verse 20 to 23, Matthew 25, 20 to 23, we see the, the parable of a man. He had received five talents and brought another five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I gained five beside the five you gave me. I hear the testimony of the master, verse 21, quickly. And his Lord said to him, well done, well done, well done, thou good and faithful servants. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. So as long as we remain faithful, we qualify to be rewarded. We qualify to be rewarded. So every time we are out on the harvest field, on our knees praying, engaging, and souls are being drafted into the kingdom, we qualify for rewards. And the good news is this. God does not pay groups. He pays individuals. God does not deal with us as groups. God deals with us as individuals. So when it's time for rewards, he's seeking to reward us as individuals. Revelations 22 and verse 12. Revelations 22 and verse 12. Behold, I come quickly. With my reward in my hand to give to every man. To give every man according. So God is watching. God is marking. God is storing. So that he can reward. And when it's time for rewards, he checks our personal impute to determine his own rewards in our direction. May none of us miss out our rewards in this season. Say an amen like a true believer. Remember, we serve a rewarder God. It's not a use of man. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. It's a reward of them that diligently seek him. He has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. Isaiah 45 and verse 19. He has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. So no one genuinely serves God without something to show. I've got good news for somebody here today. This season of glory will be your own season of rewards. Lift up your hands where you are. Lord, I receive grace to continue to labor on the harvest field, to continue to engage with fervency on the prayer altar in all of my kingdom advancement engagement. Lift up your voice. We all need that grace. Lift up your voice. Lift up your hand. Receive that grace. It's available this morning. Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace for fervency, for continuity in my engagement, in my stewardship, all through the season and beyond. So when the time for reward come, my own shall not be lost. Thank you, precious Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed.